Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terry and today I have an exciting new video for you guys. Today, we'll be diving into my broad strategy with Facebook ads and how essentially I'm never testing another audience again with Facebook ads and going purely broad. Uh, so I'm bringing you guys pretty much a 28 point kind of breakdown of exactly how and why it works and how you can implement it in your business. So that being said, before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys, let's dive into the video. Okay, so the ultimate guide to going broad Facebook ads in 2022. First off, let's give some clarification to this topic of what the hell broad is specifically. Because a lot of people ask me, what is broad? Is broad like targeting jewelry as an interest versus like, you know, targeting a specific brand such as like K Jewelers or something like that. So broad is essentially location, gender, and age. So men 21 to 50 who live in USA. This also might be Canada, USA, and Australia men who are 21 to 50. You know, whatever your specific target demographic is, is essentially what's considered broad. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions that is completely false is that Facebook will put my ad in front of a poor quality audience, and that is false. Broad is not necessarily a poor quality audience, as people just have this misconception due to it saying broad. And I'm breaking down exactly how broad works right now so first off just a backstory on broad of how i kind of fell into going broad with all my accounts versus continuously to do audience testing and stuff first off all of my biggest case studies involved a broad audience so like none of my biggest case studies was like a look like two percent it was broad I, I used to call it just open or or pixel only i had some weird names for some shit like that but all my biggest case studies were broad only so i kind of had that hindsight but i wasn't really going all in with it and then i started following a guy ct disruptor on twitter and he kind of further got me thinking more and more about it and presented some quite undeniably amazing case studies and i was just like you know what i'm gonna give it a go and since kind of I think like january december we dived into it and it's substantially been a huge help for our client accounts and our just our agency overall from a operational standpoint of timing in the ad account and how much stuff we're managing so once i saw pretty much how much going using like an interest or look like audience was limiting the algo um, i basically just wanted to quit all the interest in la testing and stuff like that just went straight broad so First off, Facebook wants for you, wants you to go broad in that sense right there. Every month, they're removing more and more interests. And now, like expansions also auto apply. So where your look like audience, your interest targeting, it's it literally says a note right here. We may deliver ads beyond your audience for eligible ad objectives if it's likely to improve performance. So basically it's saying that, hey, Yes, you're gonna target this, but we're also gonna test some like audience is outside of that to see if it'll improve performance. Okay. Now again, there's no graph that shows you how much and things like that, but it basically just says that expansion used to be you used to have a button, but now you don't even have a button now. You have to have that on essentially. Second thing is the interest. So like this is the interest right here that I was running for one of my accounts. I'm gonna show you in a second how it basically just crushed me. But basically we were running this interest very profitably. Then one day Facebook said, Hey, we're removing it, and then guess what? it got removed and let me just show you that specific ad set with that interest in it it's been $119,000 on it 2.72 row ads about $325,000 in revenue um give or take and yeah Facebook just removed it guess what it cannot run this audience at all anymore and luckily I've been able to crush it with broad since then that basically the business fell down had to redo a bunch of testing on broad found a new set of winning ads on broad and i've been able to start to scale back up but if i didn't know that i'd basically just be like hey well i guess facebook crushed my business like it ruined my business and that's sense right there so why broad so we talked about a few different key points um but overall like what's the main reasons why you want to go broad is no more wasting budget on audience testing which is going to bring your overall cpa down if i'm just not spending money on audience testing and just focusing on ads that's going to improve cpas to do a lot better than trying to find an audience that might be able to run for a week and then have to turn things off higher scaling potential i'm about to show you some case studies that i'm spending i spent up to twenty two thousand dollars per day on broad worked amazing i have one account right now that's been consistently spending a, over 10 grand a day and i have other accounts spending five six seven thousand dollars a day consistent abroad and it's working really well you're no longer limiting the facebook algorithm and i'm gonna show you in a second of how running interest look likes limit the algorithm for facebook ads now 
The last one, or second last one, is higher level of focus of what moves the needle. Basically, if like your ad fails on broad, then you might go down a rabbit hole of testing a bunch of different look likes, interests, and stuff like that, burning up more money when you can just use that time to go create a new ad that's going to convert better on broad. And that's going to move the needle a lot more than trying to find an audience that you can run for a short period of time. Lastly, it's more consistent results over a longer period of time. Again, I'm going to show you in a second of how exactly like audience burnouts happen, where like you basically have a small interest, you put a big budget behind it, crushes it for like a week and then boom all of a sudden your cpa skyrockets and it's because of that limiting side when you're limiting the algorithm you're not going to get consistent results you might get consistent results for a few days and then all of a sudden it breaks in that sense so first off our <laughs> Continuing on why broad, just show you some case studies right here. This is my first kind of like huge win with uh, broad back in 2021. And that was basically, yeah, we spent $126,000. And this is over the course of like a week, essentially week, two weeks at most. Crushed it at this time. Uh, this is some other accounts right here that are currently live right now. Uh, I'm not sure which one this one is. Oh yeah, this account right here, but it's like 2.17 ROAS. We just signed this client on beginning of April. It's almost towards the last days of the month of April. They were seeing barely like a 2x for us with their store uh we came in went fully broad took their best performing ads launched it against and now they're seeing like a little over 3x overall on their store crushing it on the mer side so just slaughtering it on that side um this is a account where it's a um, subscription supplement so uh the roas is lower on this account but they're still seeing about a 2.5 3x overall and we've scaled this brand from seventeen thousand dollars per month to about uh sixty seventy thousand dollars per month in revenue uh here's another one it's a legion account just to show you guys it does work on multitude of things um, i think legion's a really important one because a lot of people are thinking oh no but legion if you don't target a high quality audience you're gonna get poor quality leads uh we've kept and monitored their cpa so like obviously it's a lead then the people call them and then basically they close the deal and we've monitored their overall cpa and their cpa um actually went down since we went to broad because we've actually been able to get substantially more leads and um yeah I mean, this brand's spending i think roughly 10 to twelve thousand dollars per day and facebook ad spend and we're doing about five extra rise for them uh so that's about fifty sixty thousand dollars there in revenue making for them so another brand right here um they're doing clothing Again, they're crushing consistently on a week to week basis, three to four extra rest. And Facebook's their primary driver. They did, I think, roughly like uh, averaged about ten to fifteen thousand dollars a day in revenue last week. So crushed it. Some more just examples right here. This is just showing two different ad sets right here. One when we, you know, spent twenty one thousand dollars from when we were still doing interest targeting. Then we went broad and it went down to thirty nine dollars for average uh, cost per acquisition. It's also too just showing you guys app installs as well crushing it for this client on app install basis their longer term goal is um like trials uh that can leads to purchases this is one of their profitable assets campaigns right there it's five dollars per install but also we're selling a 60 dollar um subscription which uh has about a or 60 dollars per year subscription and it has roughly uh, about 180 dollar uh lifetime value so getting like we're literally getting subscriptions for like our trials for like uh yeah subscription about 50 60 bucks so break even on day one so all right cool so just to show you guys some winning stuff with broad broad does work uh, but let's go further more into just how exactly it works so key point number one is that ads create the audience you have to understand this okay so let's just understand it from facebook side they want us to spend money on their platform because without us they not making any money. They don't have a business model. So as advertisers, they want us to spend money on the algorithm. So if they can get you better results, guess what? You're going to spend a lot more. Okay. A lot of people have these expectations that Facebook is against you. Facebook is not against you. They want to work with you. Um, you just have to play by their rules. And their rule is, is that if their users does not have a great time on their platform, then, or like they want their users to have a great time on the platform. Okay. So they want you to spend as much money as possible and they want users to have a great time on the platform. So what does that mean? You got to create some great ads, ads people want to see, products people actually want, not selling dog shit products to try to make a quick profit. People want real products, real stuff. So like go out of your business, make sure you're actually serving a product that people actually want. So great product, great ad, great like, you know, copy, creative, everything like that. 
And so with these wants, they will take a constant audit of who is engaging with your ad plus taking ad actions on it and serve it to more people like them. So if you have a great ad or just like whatever your ad is, they're going to take a constant audit. They'll serve it to like 500 people. Boom. They'll figure out, okay, cool. All those 500 people who liked it, who engaged with it, who made a purchase from it, things like that. And they're going to constantly try to optimize it and find more people like that. So ads create the audience. Okay. Just gotta know that now how does facebook say you have a bad ad because you know, the reason why i'm jumping into this next is because ads create the audience cool you start testing ads and stuff and you're probably thinking oh well uh i tested my ad and on broad it's getting like a 0.27 ctr and i'm not getting any purchases well <laughs> how does facebook say you have a bad ad that's the next thing facebook wants you to spend more money with them and they want their users to be happy but facebook will not hop on a phone dial and call you and say hey nick look you know, those ads, they aren't really converting in. Our users not liking them. You should turn them off. If you have a bad ad, they're going to penalize you with higher CPMs, higher CPCs, lower click-through rate. Like a lower click-through rate, very easy, like identifier right there. And a lower ROAS. And that's when you're going to cry and say, hey, bra didn't work for me. You know, like that's usually the first signs. Okay. So this is how you determine face that you have a bad ad on Facebook. Again, they're not going to call you. They're going to show you data. So they want to take your money. So they're going to give you higher CPM. So they're going to say, Hey, um, so I've, I've worked in an account before where like <laughs> we launched some ads and I had like a hundred dollars CPM and then brought that CPU down like maybe 50 bucks. And, um, yeah, the first ads weren't really great. Now they're really engaging the new ones and better stuff like that. But if you have a $50 CPM and a hundred dollars CPM, you have to spend double to reach the same amount of people. So that's going to you to affect your ROAS. Now I've also seen competitive markets where they have just a naturally higher CPMs and I've still seen brands be super, super profitable. I've seen brands like we have a brand right now that's things like a little over two extra ass that has a ridiculously low CPM but a horrible CTR. So like we're constantly working on improving the ad to get a better click through rate. But that's just something to look at right there. So is it broad not working or is it you just have a bad ad? Okay. So now the next thing, limited machine learning or limiting machine learning. So like this is the biggest thing for me that clicked. That was just like, wow. Okay, I understand now. So we're gonna pretend that this little blue circle is your audience. This is your ideal buyers, things like that. People that are gonna purchase from you, okay? This gray is just the audience as a whole, okay? It's like, here's a pool of people. This is everyone who's wearing a red baby suit and your goal is to target everyone in a red baby suit, okay? So that's your audience size. That's people who are actually gonna take action on your ad, okay? So I have three different groups right here. So this is broad. You can see how everyone within that box is enclosed in there all your buyers are in there okay now you can see this one right here only about 40 percent of your buyers are actually in that audience group so this is my you might be targeting a lookalike purchase 30 days you might be targeting i don't know um, engaged shoppers you might be targeting you know gucci whatever like things like that like this might be your interest or your look like okay and you can see only a small portion about 40 percent of your portion of your group of buyers are inside that audience okay so that means basically what's going to happen here is facebook cannot reach this other 60 percent now let's go to this other one same thing might be your gucci or look like whatever you can see the audience size is a little bit smaller so might be targeting a small interest and you can see only about 10 percent of your buyers are in that audience and the other 90 percent on the outside okay so this one right here, your broad, there's no limitations in targeting your audience. Okay. Facebook's just like, give it to me. We got it. You know, we can target them in there. This one right here, there's some limitations because you can only target about 40% of your buyers inside of that audience pool. So the other 60% you can't target because you're limiting the machine learning by targeting gauge shoppers, Gucci, look like purchase 30 days, whatever that might be. And then this one right here has some very hard limitations on targeting audience. Okay. You can't you know, again, you can't expand outside that circle, outside this um, rectangle. So like 10%, like you're going to spend a few dollars, you get a few purchases and then boom, you're going to start seeing your ROAS drop as you start to spend more. So that's my next thing. Which one do you think you could spend more on? So this is going to dive back into your um, kind of 
why when you test at a low budget, $50, $60 a day, you find some winning either audience or a winning ad, and then you throw it in like your scaling campaign or you start to scale that and performance drops. And that is because you're limiting the machine learning. So that's why we don't even like to do audience testing anymore because I wanna make sure that whatever ad I toss up, it has the full potential, like the audience is not limiting its potential to perform. So you can see right here, if I gave the machine a hundred bucks, it could spend all that hundred bucks to, you know, hit this person. If I gave this machine a hundred bucks, you know, it's gonna spend it. It's gonna probably target all of these people, but it's also like, once I start pushing more than a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred, whatever that number is, every account has a different number, every audience has a number, things like that. We're gonna start seeing performance drop because they can't go outside that box to target those people. So this is exactly how I can double 5X, 10X, et cetera, my spend within short periods of time. Um, for our Legion account, uh, we were spending three or four thousand dollars a day. Client said, "Hey, I need to be at ten thousand dollars a day." I said, "Cool, no problem at all." I w went into my campaign. I took a three or four thousand dollar campaign. I just, I, w I literally just CBO would it, boom, and I ten x spend or not ten x spend. I went from three thousand to ten thousand dollars. I just jumped that because we had a really good offer, we had a solid set of winning ads, and we were going broad. So I knew that the algorithm could potentially reach all those people. Now. Again, that was definitely very risky. And out of all the different ways to scale an account, that was a risky, higher risk, um, you know, action. If I had 30 days to scale that from $3,000 to 10,000, what I could do is I could do 20% a day because it's it's not as risky. So you have to understand that. So a lot of people right here, you're too eager to scale that you don't look at it from that perspective right there. So for me, I knew in that scenario right there, the client needs to scale ASAP. I had a lot of pressure on me to scale that ASAP. So that's why we just had to balls up and do it. Um, but if I had that long period of time, then I'll, I'll do the 20% a day uh, rule essentially. So I tried broad, but it didn't work. I had lots of, and that's what a lot of you guys are probably saying right now. I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, Nick, I tried broad, but it didn't work. Look, I had a lot of failures on broad as well before it started working for me. Like, not gonna lie. I was against it for a while. Then I started seeing a few six signs of success. And then now I'm just fully broad. Okay, essentially you have to test a lot of ads against it, okay? You do not use any other audiences. You just go broad, 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 keep testing new ads against it, okay? So here you can see right here, it's a simple creative testing campaign. Each batch is a either a new angle or existing angle, um, all against broad right here. And you can see right here, I'm testing a variety of different things. And you can obviously see which ones are winners and losers and things like that. And then obviously, once you find your winning ads, you can move it to like your scaling campaign and stuff like that. And I actually have a video at the end of this video of the recommendation that goes over my full creative testing strategy. So that way you guys can uh, fully understand. So broad ads, truth is we're finding they need to be well more well done. I, I see a lot of people like back in like the early days, of uh, Facebook ads, you can take a literally a, just a copy and paste image of a product on fucking Google images, literally write flash sale 50% off now. And I put a headline custom America t-shirt and run it and it boom, like crushes it. Your ads need to be more well done. Um, there's a lot, and this is, this comes from a lot of different things. First off, like just the environment, like it's more competitive environment, more advertisers, things like that. So like people and, and the consumers are trained differently. Now consumers want to be buying from a real brand, not some cheap little store. So you also have to look at it from that perspective, but just the ads in general, they need to clearly call out who your ideal audience is clearly articulate to people how the product will solve X problem they're experiencing. Um, so you just need to be a better marketer overall. So like when you're testing broad, don't look at this as the ad, don't look at it as the audience is failing. Look at it as from the perspective of the ad is failing. Again, Facebook will not call you and tell you your ad is bad. They're gonna give you stuff like higher CPMs, higher CPCs, lower CTR, lower ROAS. So you have to look at it from that perspective, okay? It's not the audience, it's your ad suck. Like I'm gonna be blunt with you as in that perspective right there. Okay. A lot of you guys are like commenting, well, Nick, I'm my ads are amazing, my creatives are amazing, my copy's amazing, but I'm I'm still spending, I'm stuck spending ten dollars a day. How the hell is your ads amazing if you're only spending ten dollars a day? Like you should be spending way more than that if your ads are amazing. Okay. Use the Facebook data to tell you whether or not your ads are amazing. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see an opinion based of, oh, I think my ad's amazing. It's been hundreds of times where we spent 40 hours working on a set of creatives. We launch them, they, they suck. And then we take a video of the product, looks horrible. We upload it and it crushes it. So I, I struggle with this a lot in our agency with clients because they're like, they create an ad, they, they want to spend more on it because they're, they're emotionally attached to it, thinking it's a better ad. But realistically, 
we have the same cut rules for all of our ads and we make decisions based off data. We do not make decisions based off emotions, which is very key. So I'll also look at, look at broad ads from the SEO approach. So I'm testing more copies, visuals, headlines with key terms and it's better help machine learning to, to, to stay to serve to relevant audiences. So um, I may call out the audience I'm specifically targeting gamers. Don't you hate when you're playing a game and have to get up and go use the bathroom, introducing the squatty potty that sits on your, your chair, <laughs> like, you know, something like that. Um, that's a really weird product I just thought of, but I was off the fly. So just to kind of look at it from that perspective right there, um, long story short, make better ads essentially with broad ads. So just give you guys a quick recap. You're building a house on a weak foundation. If you're still using, you know, look likes and interests. Uh, if we establish the fact that Facebook wants a win-win for you, the user by serving relevant ads or a win-win for you plus the user of serving uh, relevant ads. So they want you to spend more money on the platform because that's how they make more money. And they they know that the only way you're gonna make more is spend more is by getting more sales and stuff. So, so they wanna help you out. And they also wanna protect the integrity of their platform and like their users and stuff like that, make sure they're happy on the platform. Interest look likes give great short term results, but fail at higher spends due to smaller audience pools and restricted machine learning. So again, going back to this right here, which one do you think you can spend more on at scale? Okay, this one might convert like a two extra OS from $100 a day to $10,000 per day. This one might convert at a five extra OS from $100 a day two or, or three extra rise at five hundred dollars a day and then a two extra rise at a thousand dollars a day so you just have to look at it from that perspective right there as well okay so what's going to happen now likely you're going to feel like you found the hidden key to all your facebook struggles and you're gonna get really excited to test this you'll test it for a few days not see the results you want and continue to be frustrated with facebook so yeah you're gonna be like whoa i'm gonna test this you can go test this you're probably gonna like pull three or four of your winning ads in your account throw it against broad and just see performance stock and you're like Wow, Nick's a scam, even though this video is completely free. <laughs> but and realistically, here's what you need to do. You need to start an ad testing campaign, I'm about to give you a video exactly what you need to go watch to, to do that. You need to test three to 10 new ads per week against broad. So you got to go out there and fucking roll with the ads, create some really great ads that you can put some money behind. Okay. Use the data to tell you whether or not they're good or bad. And how do you do that? I want you to go ahead, look at the lifetime spend on all these ads you're creating. Once they cross over one extra AOV or three extra target CPA and are unprofitable, kill it. Okay. So let's say for example, your target CPA is $25 and basically that's just a cost per acquisition you need to hit to hit the ROAS goal. So like if you, if you want to make a three X ROAS and your AOV is 90 bucks, you basically just need to get an acquisition of $30 target CPA. It's very simple math. Okay. So after I spend 90 bucks, if you know not a three extra ass on that ad i'm gonna turn it off simple okay once you find your winning stack of ads you might test 30 40 ads you're gonna find a winning of like three to four ads you can put some money behind set up a cbo through 100 300 per day with one broad ad set in it again one ad set you don't need multiple just one ad set and you run all your profitable ads inside so all those ads you found that work toss them inside and scale it. Give it a few days, optimize and scale. Um, for scaling, again, we recommend 20%. We like we like keep looking at the last three days of data and we keep pushing it based off uh, 20%. And yeah, and again, you might just have to test a lot of ads before this actually works for you, okay? But the outcome, the outcome is so much worth it. We'll have an audience that you can scale faster and higher. You won't have to spend another dollar on audience testing. You'll cut down your time in the ad account by 60 to 75%. You'll be focused on new ads weekly that actually drive the needle. So you'll be doing productive work versus busy work. And you'll never have to worry about another interest being removed that will wreck your business. Also, a few things. We've been able to see brand scale at a faster rate, um, which is probably the biggest thing for you guys that you're looking for. So now, last thing I want to leave you guys with is just a few videos to watch from here. So I'm sure you guys are probably questioning how I structure my ad account. So here's my simple ad account structure allows me to scale two times faster. Basically just going through this process. I no longer do retargeting campaigns. Here's why. So I'm also going broad. Uh, there's some, some benefits of not running retargeting anymore. So I'll showcase that as well. And then my actual like video on how to test Facebook as 2020 where I break down that kind of creative testing campaign. So hope that all helps you guys out. I really appreciate you watching this video. I know it's about 30 minutes long, so I know it's a long video, but I uh, appreciate you guys watching this. Hopefully this answers everything. I know in some of my videos, I, I'm not fully broad yet, but you know, pretty much from here now, like in our agency, we're fully broad for all of our accounts. So just something I just want to point that out. Some of these videos, I can still kind of talk about me 
maybe using best performing interest or abroad. You can kind of see my transition. Oh, if you watch my videos from back to January to now, you can see my transition as I slowly go from, oh, you might want to test broad to, oh, we're testing, we're working with broad, but you might want to use your look like your interest as well if it's performing better to now where it's just like, we create ads that convert on broad essentially. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're a business on at least 50K per month in revenue, i uh, love to hop on a call with me and my team. We'll jump on a call together and we'll show you how we've been able to scale brands, hit a million dollars a month, multiple hundreds of thousand dollars a month in revenue. And we'll build a strategy for you that you can take and run with it. Um, or you have the option to work with us if you choose. So if you're doing less than that, stay subscribed to the channel. Uh, be on the lookout. I will be doing a course uh, soon. I say edu course, education company, whatever you guys want to call it. But it's me basically just how to be a great marketer. That's what I'm focusing on with some of the Facebook ad tactics, but it's be mostly focused on how to be a great marketer. That's where I'm going to be going with the course. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. My name is Nick Terrio. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.